pay a premium to enjoy the white space that comes along with this penthouse unit. Something that's very interesting is that on this particular stack, which is stack 91, where we drop off points, you have a gym. So we're gonna head in. Let's go. Permission control. We have lift off. Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of our new launch review series in our PRB Insights channel and today with me in the studio is Yu Rong and Lyndon. Hello. Hi. Yeah, we're going to cover a project in D10. Today, this project is something that's not new in the market. It definitely has been there. Uh, but right now, recently, there was some news about it um, relaunching with a newer pricing and that's none other than Cascaden Reserve. So today, we're going to cover this particular project and we want to make some sense of the numbers as well as so to share with our customers and share with you as well um, the, the kind of like the, the pro more information about that particular project, the floor plans, uh, and likely, you know, what is the perks of buying to this particular unit or particular um, development. So um, just to quickly, just a quick recap itself, most recently in March, um, there were some news articles about Cascade Reserve being relaunched uh, at a new pricing that is um, starting from $2,900 PSF. So just a bit of recap, this project was first launched in 2018, right? And mm. I think back then, the pricing was pretty much in a high of the 3000 odd PSF range. So right now, they came down to 2009. They offered a couple of, you know, I think this is quite a good discount. Plus the fact that, I think it's also one of the reason is that um, they got a ABSD kind of like deadline extension. This project has already TOP in um, 2023, right? So from 2019 to 2023, basically there are 14 <coughs> units transacted. Yep. Uh, so this is based on the first launch. Uh, and then of course, you know, like the repricing strategy recently. So previously, the average entry price, I would say that is around like 3.5 right. per square feet. Mm. Uh, the relaunch starting at 2009. So at 2009, I think like by looking at, uh, comparing with what are some of the launches that has been done last year, like for example, RCL location, averagely, usually at about 2.5 per square feet. Mm. But the entire range will actually usually stretch until like 2.8 per square feet, right? Mm. So at 2009, to get something that's core central region, right. Orchard address, I think that is, that's where the attraction comes in. Mm. And you can see that after the, the relaunch, technically speaking now, uh, total 88 units are actually mm. off the shelf. Right. So which means that 74 additional units have uh, right. cleared off. Total, this project has 192 units. Mm, right. So just a quick recap of the project facts. So this particular project, uh, I would say that uh, the tenure right now is uh, basically the 99 years tenure. Total number of units is 192. Um, in terms of the expected OP, is already TOP is already, and this is located along Cascaden Road. So where, where we are located, so this is basically a, a fact of the pay whole place itself. Um, definitely the PSF, uh, in terms of historical high, that was back in the 2018 days. La. But what we want to showcase to you is that this particular project, in terms of location-wise, in terms of the overall uh, you know, upcoming uh, surrounding area, there's quite a couple of new projects. And I think there's also a new government land sale site there uh, that is of um, quite a certain level of interest as well. Mm. So we're going to mm. talk about that. But before that, we let's have a look at you know the development. So this is definitely a very posh, looking kind of like facade design um, and it's done by, you know, in a way, a very well-known architect as well. But I think we want to showcase the kind of like lush, uh, posh living in a very esteemed location. Um, and the developer for this particular project is none other than our SC Global, right? So I think when we talk about SC Global, just now we're talking about quite a number of um, their projects that they have mm -hmm. on hand, plus also some of the unique uh, features of this particular development uh, developer, right? So maybe just to chime in here, uh, when we look at SC Global, right, we are talking about they are not like mass market kind of developers where they develop all over Singapore. Mm. They are really focused on luxury. As you can see here, it's all within the CCR, within the sought after districts of mm. like Bukit Timah even, or Orchard itself, even in Sentosa Cove. So when we are stepping, I feel that when we are stepping into this kind of CCR or this kind of project, right, we have to envision what are the buyers, who are the buyers and what kind of lifestyle are they living also. Mm. So that's why it's very important because when I, when I serve some of uh, my CCR buyers, right, they want to know who's the architect, who is uh, right. this, who designed this and all that kind of thing. It's no more just, oh, let me look at numbers. Mm. 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 Because I, seen, like, I, I think like there are, sometimes it's uh, beyond past, you know, like from an investment angle, mm. sometimes it's more for the convenience, sometimes it's more for the address. Uh, they want an iconic building, they want a luxury building, they want to know like what's the profile of the neighbours, mm. who mm. will be attracted to come to this place, are there enough privacy, are there uh, views, 
Of course, some will be interested in like, you know, like freehold. Mm. And of course, today, like uh, Cascadian Reserve is the rare government land sale site in a predominantly freehold kind of location. Today, we will also be sharing with you uh, how, what is the strategy when you own, let's say, like a leasehold 99 years, mm. you know, like a miss uh, majority, you know, like freehold kind of area. What makes this uh, anchoring point for Cascadian Reserve as well? And of course, I think like, uh, sometimes, you know, like when uh, people who are buying these kind of projects, right, they will also be considering things like, uh, is it iconic enough, right, to be considered as like, uh, like a trophy mm, mm, as well? Like a tro- right? trophy home in a way. La. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, of course, when we talk about SC Global, uh, one of the very uniqueness of their project is that, I mean, for this particular company, mm. uh, they offer, like, uh, we call it an art... Art, art, rotation collection, ro- art rotation collection yep. mm. so they will basically rotate some of the very famous art pieces across their developments mm. across their projects and so they own all this art collection right. Right, which will be uh, displayed across its properties so like they are all from like iconic names like Fernando Botero Juming Jume uh, so all these things I think like when you're owning uh, projects like this it's like stepping into some form of like your art own gallery, gallery kind right. of view right? mm. so I think like that acts that adds a different dynamic. Yeah. Uh, this project is also on like a sloping land, right? And the architect actually positioned the tower of the residential on the tallest part of the building and then the entire thing is sloping upwards, right? Mm. So like, you get the nice landscaping out from the pool to the lawn mm. and the entire project is elevated mm. as well. So uh, I think like, or overall, right, it screams, you know, like generally is to like have something that is more private that will mm. appeal to uh, somebody that is trying to find something, you know, like in this kind of landscape. Right. So, I mean, this is actually one of the other art pieces that we want to showcase and this is actually an extract from the brochure. But of course, uh, living in Orchard area, then definitely, you know, you need some form of like a concierge service. Mm. I think that's something that's very common nowadays. Uh, so even if you go into like the Newton area, you know, you also have like Pullman residences um, that it offers a kind of like concierge service as mm. well. So this uh, project definitely also comes with it as well, which is uh, right over here where they mentioned that it actually comes with um, a certain level of um, concierge plus also estate management team that is on standby um, to serve the residents of this uh, Cascaden Reserve. Mm. Right. And, I, and I think like concierge is definitely like one thing, right? Yeah, I think it's more about the service level that you're going to get the team as well, right? Yeah. Like sometimes, you know, like how you differentiate between like a four-star and a five-star restaurant, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, a four, five, four-star or five-star kind of hotel, right? right? So of course, other than, you know, like the livability, one of the key things is also like as part, you know, like the concept service. Mm. Is it like good enough, friendly enough, timely mm. in terms of, you know, like getting to your needs? So all these things are, I would say like the, the key elements that potentially if you are going to stay here, these are the few key expectors that might sway you with regards to, okay, am I going to go to this building? Or I'm going to go to the next mm. building. And I think if you're looking at something that is brand new mm-hmm. without having to wait. Mm. So this is also one of the attraction points right. that Cascadian Reserve can offer instead of waiting for like a three to four years. Mm. Mm. So what, yeah, like I just want to chime in here because when I'm not too sure if you all have brought clients to like see like super high end uh, luxury <laughs> ones, right? Like, okay, I got the very good chance of bringing clients to like even see Wallach residents. So you have to book your timing and all that kind of thing. Right. But the moment I like park my car, I enter through the concierge, then they know me. They're like, hi, good afternoon, Mr. Leong. Uh, welcome to Wallach Residences. Like I went to Wallach that time for viewing. And then they also know my client's name. So they address them by their name. Mm. It's like when you go into SQ, then maybe if you know you get the chance of like sitting uh, a business class, for example, they're going to address you by a name. It becomes very personal. personal mm. la. And you feel that, hey, I, I'm recognised. Or even coming home, hey, welcome home, Mr. Leong. Uh, welcome home, Mr. Ong. I'll, I'll mm. call you Mr. Leong next time. <laughs> 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 Make you feel more important. It, makes, it makes it feel very, it's like, not from just your loved ones, yeah. but also it makes you feel like, hey, like, hey, what well, this is, my kampong la. But your love one won't call you Mr. Leong. No. <laughs> <laughs> that, but at least someone greet you la. Like, oh, it's as yeah, simple as, true. Oh, yeah. good evening, uh, how, how was your day, that kind of thing. That's oh, the, the difference between like, you just mentioned about like, the level of service. Like, yes, like, yes. The concept, right? Whether you feel very welcome. Correct, you know, like, correct, that kind correct, of, I think correct. like, there's a difference between like, uh, I think the highest level of concept should be more like, uh, like similar to like, a butler kind of feeling. Mm, like, mm. something that's very personal. Yeah. Versus like something that is like, you know, like more like a front desk. That yes. would be the starting <laughs> level of like what you call like uh, the minimum basic of concierge. Like. Yep. Mm-hmm. I, I also seen projects where 
It was meant to have a concierge, but when they TOP, there's only the, the front desk there without anybody. <laughs> the security guard. Maybe the security guard. Yeah, but but, but viewing, of course, those like, are okay yeah. because they are not meant to be uh, more like in the luxury kind of yeah. category, so mm. that one is not so important. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, of course, when you talk about this kind of like prime, prime area, right? So, just give a quick recap, like, just in case our, our audience doesn't know where Cascaden Reserve is. It's actually located along Orchard Boulevard Road. Uh, you can see that it's actually within a very close proximity to Orchard Boulevard, um, Thompson East Coast Line train station, which is technically is just only one stop away from the main Orchard um, MRT station. Yes. So in terms of overall location-wise, it's definitely quite very, very close to Orchard already. So there's actually a back gate also for Cascadian Reserve, like mm. why you don't mention. Because it's on a sloping land, mm. right, the back, there's a back gate that allows you to easily access towards the MRT of Orchard Boulevard. Mm. But majority mm. of the time, I think once you come out, you're probably just going to turn left, walk down the road. It's probably about maybe 10, 10 minutes or so. Mm. You're going to reach the Orchard Belt. Mm. I, I think the train station is, is not that important for like if you are <laughs> staying here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, end of the day, it's just to show the close proximity. But uh, you will be surprised. You will be surprised because I've driven past there like, a f I would say recently. Uh, and I see it's a lot of the expats uh, with their kids and all that. Rent or uh, places sometimes right. even they are just coming out of the train station. I, okay, from what I've seen, it looks like they are probably residents in uh, that area also. Right. So I think ultimately the public transport is uh, something that it's everyone takes. La. Regardless whether you are a billionaire or a, mm. uh, a dollar air. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, but sometimes like, when, I, when I work with uh, clients who are looking for luxury buildings, like, like they have their own chauffeur also. So they, they come in their own, uh, yes, they, yes, they come yes. in their own mm. chauffeur cars, but right? So technically speaking, like, of course, I think like having an additional train station, like sometimes well, for like families, you know, you want your, your kids to gain their own independence, right? Mm. Uh, but without being too inconvenient, in areas that like like sometimes like in, in places like this previously the MRT station like you, you can let them uh, have a feel of like you know like travelling by private transport I think that, that, that works also yep. mm. right Mr. Leong uh, I would say that <laughs> because recently I saw on a I think on a post uh, there was this someone that took a picture a selfie uh, with someone at the MRT and apparently that person is like well known like, celebrity like one of the Forbes like top 10 oh. that kind of people and uh, and, but he's just in his normal shorts. And then, all that. Like, I don't know, maybe a Loro, Loro Piana t-shirt. But he's just in the MRT. <laughs> so accessibility really helps quite a bit there. Mm. Like, because imagine if you're just staying one stop away, then maybe, you, you know, richer people are nowadays more safe the earth. Then they will walk. And yeah, they will walk. <laughs> <laughs> they will walk. But generally, it's like, you know, it's just one stop. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. So, I mean, of course, uh, close, good location, uh, definitely be surrounded by a lot of some, I would say, key, um, you know, locations, like, you'll be, like, minutes away from Robinson Key, Orchard Belt, uh, and stuff like that, but I think this is actually where we want to showcase the plot ratio uh, mm. in terms of the whole entire area. So, you can see that you're actually surrounded by residential lands, uh, and uh, in terms of the Cascaden Reserve, definitely uh, in a prime, prime location. Next thing we're going to talk about is actually the site map. So when you look at the site map, <coughs> this is basically where we look into the macro part of the project. So this is uh, the Cascaden Road, which is the main road that enters mm. into the project. And this is basically on an elevated land. Uh, this is actually the Orchard Boulevard Road, right? Mm. Where this is the main road. So this is where we call the, the, the back gate that actually allows you to have a quick uh, walk um, along the Orchard Boulevard Road. So this is a plain view. There's only about um, eight units per level. And there's only one block of 28. Mm. 20, 28. 28 floors. Yeah. Yep, correct. In terms of units distribution, we are looking at a smaller units of a one bedroom with study, all the way to as big as a three bedroom apartment uh, with a private lift and a study. La. So, this is basically based on the latest information on uh, the amount of units that's still available, which is 107 units after 85 units has been sold. So, um, you know, it allows you to have the flexibility of going to a one beta, you know, your options like that's available mm. uh, in the market. So, just to chime in here, I think uh, SE Global and even New World has been very trying to have that, that their USP for their developments. Because mm. majority of the times, uh, people uh, or developments in that area has always been 2,000 square feet, 3,000 square feet. For right. a one beta, you're talking maybe about 1,000, 2,000, 3 square feet. So this is where they come in with a very 
what the market has accepted mm. in terms of their size and then allowing more uh, buyer buyer share profile la, to enter into staying in Orchard. Because last time when I was younger, like I would never ever thought that Orchard ch- could be feasible to stay in. Mm. Like maybe staying in Orchard, a house is going to set you back like five, seven, eight million dollars mm-hmm. because it's just the prime prime of Singapore. Right? Mm. But right now with the prices there, uh, with them reducing their price also, uh, it has allowed more people to try to break that mentality that, hey, maybe with about three odd million plus, I can enter into Orchard and I can stay there and live that lifestyle. Mm. Maybe because I don't have kids or I'm a single bachelor uh, or my kids have grown up, I've always liked that area and I continue working maybe in the financial district area. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So generally wise, I think like what uh, Mr. Leong is sharing is that <laughs> like uh, surrounding projects, like the, the freehold properties, number one, uh, the two bedders are maybe at 1,004 kind of square footage, like mm-hmm. three bedrooms are 1,007 to 2,000 square footage, right? And then if you add on like a three 3,005 PSM, averagely, five, six million for like a two bedder. Mm. Uh, and then if it's three bedroom, then it will be seven million and upwards, right? So these are the, the rough ranges, right? So over here, what Cascadian Reserve did was like, uh, number one, the sizing is still, I would say like, quite good size, just not as big as 1004, so like 800 plus square feet for like the two bedder, 1163 square feet for the three bedroom. Mm. And so with a 99 years lease as well, so they are able to keep the overall price quantum at a more easier, to a more palatable level like, to enter into the same lifestyle. Mm. Uh, so I think it's a good design in a way whereby they, they maintain that small um, unit size with a slower uh, PSF, so when they exit two together, it basically mm. offers Buyers the opportunities right now. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But, so, but if we keep to the floor plan also, yeah. since we are moving over to the floor plan, you realize that they keep a lot of the key factors in the small plan. Number one, uh, if you're staying in Orchard, you probably host a lot. Mm. You want to have friends and families or majority of the fr- time your friends over and you want a big living room. You don't want a small living room that they have to stand at whatsoever. But they kept the landscape living room kind of layout. As you mm. can see, even in the one bed, right, you have the living and dining just behind of each other. So, one, you get a bigger space to host. If mm-hmm. let's say you don't have that dining table. Number two, you get the most natural lighting because mm. your windows are on the long side of the wall. So, right. so these are some small things that they really kept note uh, despite being of a smaller size, which I think is uh, very important, especially fitting into the lifestyle of the orchard area. Right. When you look at the floor plan, I would say that this is actually a pretty decently well-designed floor plan. I mean, of course... Uh, the kind of lifestyle of the people staying there, I believe the developer will have thought through, the architect will have thought through in terms of how they want to position, let's say, for example, the kitchen. Because why we're saying this is that if you were to look into the, the rest of the other floor plans all the way to the three bedders, you also will see like an open kitchen that kind of concept instead mm. of like an enclosed kitchen. So very likely the kind of lifestyle, the target audience uh, will be people who probably uh, will only use the kitchen on a very um, you know rare basis, uh, but they want to treasure that kind of like opportunity to host uh, then henceforth, they actually enlarge the whole entire space. So, of course, there's a design mm. concept for Cascadian mm. Reserve. La. So, like, the inspiration is from uh, Miss Van Der Rohe, Fun's Wolf House. Okay. So, basically, it's mm. more like a more like an open plan kind of design. So, where, number one, central core kind of uh, target. Uh, like, so, there's a focus of, like, uh, the floor plan, which is mainly the living dining zoning that mm. you mentioned. Right? So, you can see that uh, they are a little bit more on, like, that kind of, like, landscape living dining mm. so which is very rare to find in like usually one bedrooms and two bedrooms very rare to find something that you have like a landscape mm. kind of living dining let more light in second thing is that instead of opting for like the traditional walls for the bedrooms you can see that they opt for like sliding wall panels mm. so that allows you know like uh, scenarios where to actually have a more open plan kind of living you really expand the entire living space when you're in the unit so if you need more privacy when you're hosting, if you don't want people to see your built area, then you can, of course, have the close wall the panel yeah. mm. and close it. Right? But when you're at home, it just feels like everything is enclosed. We also know of people that specifically look for houses with very flexible floor plans so that they can actually knock through all the walls. Yep. Mm. Right? Like to, to create that kind of... Openness. La. Openness, bachelor, yep. bachelorette kind of pet. Mm. Mm. So that's very interesting in terms of their design element. Okay, so... How do we find the one plus study kind of floor plan? 700 square feet, very, very good size. 700 very square feet nowadays is like two a two-bed, two-bath. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Right? So they actually really carved out, uh, I think like balcony size, I would say that it is a good 
kind of ratio to the internal space, mm. like not too big and not too small. Mm. And uh, they actually cover additional uh, study space that could potentially be also like your walk-in wardrobe area, like if you do if wish you want to, you know, like, yeah. like kind of expansion. But I think like, I really like the, the landscape living dining mm. kind of design concept. Uh, something that's interesting is, of course, like the, the bathroom is not on suite or like not that close by to the master suite. Mm. So it feels a little bit more like uh has a kind of like a powder room kind of effect, right? So like when let's say landed properties, when you are guests coming, mm. the you always have like a powder room that's more convenient, nearer to the main entrance. People mm. don't have to walk to the service area or go to the bedroom to uh, assess this kind of common facility. So I think like these are some of the key design elements. Have uh, you ever wondered why they did not consider switching the bathroom and the study to make the bathroom into a Jack and Jill and then the study into the other corner. You want to share, man? Like, like, I know, right? I'm just wondering. I'm just thinking, like, like, probably in terms of lifestyle, when you host, they probably do not want their guests to be... Probably if I say I want to block away my master suite, mm. Mm. Uh, having an ensuite Jack and Jill kind of concept will means that the guests will come close to my master bedroom. Mm-hmm. But in this case, if I have the bathroom at one end, so even if I were to host and my guests is to use the bathroom, they will still not come close to my master suite. Probably. I, I, I think it gives the flexibility that potentially the study space can be integrated as part of the master, master. suite. Ah, so like yeah, if yeah. separated, right, then it will be seen as a separate space. Mm. Uh, I, I would say that there will be a little bit lesser kind of flexibility. Mm. Right, so if I want it to be like a wardrobe space, it's very easy. It's like across, right, uh, true I will also. reach the bathroom. Mm. It can be a work study area. It can be a guest area. So mm. I think or like, or, or like I, I can make it like mm. a like a service storage space or so. I think so, that flexibility of the study being there is higher than actually having that bathroom. Like, but definitely, that's true. at the kind of uh, exchange that like, <laughs> I need to probably walk another three <laughs> meters like, to reach the bathroom, which I think is okay. Yeah. So I was uh, actually speaking with one of my clients that went down after, to take, after the price adjustment uh-huh. uh, to take a look. Uh, and he was very Impressed. amazed by this sliding door. Mm. To, to me, when I see it on a floor plan, it just looks like a pocket door. Right. Like, you know, that you can swing and slide. But I'm this guessing, is a huge piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This so so he, piece. Was, he was so amazed by it, right? That he said like, wow, the thought of it was so well done. So I, I, would, I, I would hope that maybe we could get a chance to go down to just take a look at the place and see how amazing this pocket door. But looking at the dimensions of it, it looks huge. Right. Because... Even for the two beta, you see, it covers the entire queen size, king size bed with one side table on the right, I, or, or this entire master yeah. suite. <laughs> so it looks massive, lah. This sliding door. So I re- would really want to know. This is not just a pocket door, like. like, Just you can think of it, right? Like it's like a, uh, like you know, like in US concept right nowadays they have like the the interchangeable rooms. Or like TM TM Maxwell. Yes. TM 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 W Maxwell. TM W Maxwell. So like. This really can give that kind of uh, uh, flexibility in terms of configuring mm. that we like first mentioned just mm. now. Okay, but the two beta is the one that comes with a private leave already, la, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is the one that comes with a private leave. But these are the floor plans that are only because, like what you Yong said, eighty-eight of them have already been sold. Right. Mm. We are not looking at uh, we are looking at close to fifty percent sold. Yeah. These are the floor plans that are the only ones that are available. Right. Of course, you uh, have still other var- variations which we will not cover during this yes, review. Yes, correct. La, because because they, they are they not are available also, lah. Yeah. So these are the ones that are available already, which is like in stack four, in stack two, uh, for the two bedrooms uh, with private lift. And of course, this one is the last one that we're going to showcase, which is a three bedder mm. with private lift and study. And in fact, this is the biggest unit mm. that's available right now. That is available. Yeah, There's only one wrong. stack mm. of three bedroom. Which is and this. Of, of course, the three bedroom, I think like the average pricing now is from like 3.56 yeah. all the way until 3.69 mm. million. 3.56 yeah to yeah. 3. Point for five. Orchard eh. <laughs> <laughs> like 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 I, I, I'm Leong trying to is very impressed <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to fathom it like hey 3.56 I can buy Orchard then uh, Jaden at uh, Jardin Jardin or Jaden at uh, Jurong is how much Jaden Jaden uh, Jaden at Jurong is how much it's like 2.4 Four, two point, okay, like, five plus big million three upwards, la. La, because their 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 three beta sizing is bigger. Uh-huh. But of course, their PSF is about like two, two one nine. plus per uh, square feet. Two one uh. okay. Mm. Two eight for the one beta la, for the, uh. the <laughs> very high floor that is being sold. Two, two thousand eight per square feet. Two eight for the one beta. Here we got the one beta at two nine something. If I'm not wrong. Also like about based on what is available, about three thousand. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, just this very, is just in relative no, to I, the I, price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just because this is 99 also. Yeah. That is also 99. Mm. So like one is Jurong. It's like imagine I ask you, hey, you stay where? Jurong. Oh, I stay at Orchard. How much you buy? Oh, same price, same price. Two nine. <laughs> just think about it. Like, mm. like it's just amazing when when Of course the price quantum there is a difference yes, also. Like, of so, course. Yeah. Because of the sizing and all that. But yeah. it's just amazing that that developers have come such a far distance to see how they want to reach a bigger pie of the share. It's not it's not so exclusive anymore. Who knows? Maybe next time like Nasim got like HDB also. I think That's it's a bit tough. Yeah. I think it's no, a bit tough. But like District 10 Bukit Timah, you see, we have that big tough city also. You never know what might happen also. Yeah. yeah because it's all about fair. They, they want inclusion. Singapore government's inclusion of everyone from different walks of life. Mr. Leong, can we go back to this tree beta? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so with this tree beta, I think they, they have stayed the same all throughout the unit configuration. Mm. This is what we would call a... I, I, I also call it a trifecta. Why is a trifecta? Because you have one bedroom at the top, then two like that. So it's in a triangle kind of layout. <laughs> Why? Why? Let me explain. Why? Because you don't have much wasted space. Imagine yeah. one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, right? You have a very long walkway. Mm. What can you do with the walkway? Hang painting. Uh. That's it. But if you have a shorter walkway, you are able to compact the unit more and you, are, you don't have much wasted space in between. Mm. Right. So I feel that in terms of layout, right, this is the most efficient you can get. And with this, uh, this amazing sliding pocket door, if I really don't want the second bedroom, I just want a bigger space. I just need two bedrooms. I just knock away bedroom two. That, that bedroom two and I have that whole sliding door. Grandmaster. Remove and grand living. Uh. Oh, yeah, okay. grand either way. Living. La, either way la. Yeah, you know, like I could have a formal dining and an informal mm. dining. Yeah. Okay. So that, that, that would be my take for the, the study, three bedroom. The study la. space is a bit pathetic. Okay. Hmm. hmm. It's a bit small. The okay, like the okay, master is very good size. Mm. Mm. For the his and hers wardrobe, I think like this is one of the the better layout for like a master room with a his mm. and hers. Mm. Uh, there is no like uh. Why is there this there, disappointing? There's, there's no his and hers sink. <laughs> <laughs> As in like of course like, I think like I mean you know, like, they, 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 they take but you only pay three and a half million. <laughs> They take out the provision of let's say having a bathtub, yeah, right? So true. that you yep. know, like gives you to have uh, like more wardrobe more, space. But yeah. I think like the entire uh, master room is very comfortable. Mm. Uh, bedroom two and bedroom three. I think like usually when you have this kind of clockwise fashion, like of course the the bedroom three technically, which is what we call like the back facing kind of bedrooms, right? Usually you will have uh, lesser of a view because this is very close to the next unit that is just right opposite you. Mm. But if you notice like stack three, right, it's a distance away to stack four. Mm. So I think that gives you a lot of privacy still for like bedroom three, which is great. Not an oversized balcony so that you can focus more on the uh, landscape living dining portion. Uh, in fact, the balcony is very small. But yeah, the balcony like is not too big. La. Big yeah. enough to fit the uh, ice bath. You know, like sometimes in like this kind of like uh, uh, projects, right? Yeah. Like in order to create uh, a, a bit more of like an iconic kind of uh, product, sometimes you have balconies that are very big and very long, but they are not necessary of like a very good depth. So they look like planters. So, and I call so, that a planter box. <laughs> so, so, so what happened is like, you know, like they have a lot of outdoor space but yeah. not so user. So I think like this is like just, the, just, just good enough, right. right? You know, like you mm. have a nice enough lounge area that you can extend outwards to the living dining space. And uh, of course, like the, for the study space, right, I think that is flexible, mm. right? Uh, I think like over there is flexibility. If let's say, for example, you need it as like a helper's area, then that could be converted. Likely, yeah. Uh, Really just nice, I would say, in terms of the length wise. If you if not, I think this can be a nice uh sort of like a storage space as mm. well. Uh if you don't have a lot of things, I think like that could be your office space or like what was like originally mm. planned. Yeah. I think like something that is a little bit uncommon is usually for a private leaf unit, right? The service door, the secondary door that is not from a private leaf, usually it is uh exited from the kitchen area. But mm. because over here we don't have a separate enclosed kitchen. Right, so hence you find that the service door is actually very close by to the private lobby space. Mm. So that, that kind of alcove, I think, is an additional place that you can do like your additional cabinetry work. Lo. You know, like, like your additional shoe storage. Cabinets and stuff so yeah. that can that, that can be additional like storage facility space mm. as well. So just to add on to Yu Rong's point also, I feel that when with balconies, right? Because yep. the size of the balcony affects what you do with it also. Mm. Yep. And the bigger the balcony, you're going to put more items there. Mm. For, and facade is very important. Like if you've been to those kind of big balconies, then you see people start putting in big shelves and all that. Then imagine watching, walking down Orchard 
then you look up at the developments pump, you see like wow, big shelves, then hoarding, 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 hoarding. It doesn't look that nice on the facade also, from mm. the exterior. And then also just one thing to add on. Uh, at first, uh, when I looked at this floor plan, I was like, Ugh, three bedroom, <laughs> uh, no enclosed kitchen. Mm. But then when I sat back and I, I had to analyze and speaking with Wayne also, I guess when you're living in orchard number one, you're not going to be every day cooking, cooking, cooking yeah Chinese meal, to da chan, you know, wok hei, that kind of thing. You're probably going to be out entertaining a lot. Mm. Uh, you're probably going to have a lot of meals. Uh, when you have people over and you want to cook something, you want to be able to host and interact uh, not through a service hatch, but just at the same time while it's cooking, you turn around, you are already in your living room. Mm. Kind of thing. So they, they did try to think a lot of the lifestyle because honestly, I when I don't think you'll be doing much heavy, heavy cooking in uh, this kind of lifestyle when you're staying in Orchard. I think ultimately, it's all about how they design for the kind of customers that wants mm. the unit. There, there are like so, uh, so many restaurant options mm. yeah. like along like the Orchard area as well yeah. as there are so many hotels like, you know, like with uh, fancy restaurants, right? So I think like you there, isn't, there, really, <laughs> there really isn't a need too much, you know, like to, to, to emphasize and focus mm. on like the kitchen area. So I think mm. like that's where, you know, the developer are focusing more on like uh, the other spaces. Mm. space. So, shall we take a look at the pricing? I think that's something yes. that's, uh, yeah. that's very interesting because this is basically based on uh, what we have, March. which is 25th March uh, right here. So, these are the available units that are still available. So, you can see that um, quite a fair bit. Um, some of them is pretty high floor as well. Anything to take note of from here? I think this is basically the pricing that we have. Yeah, this, this is accurate. the latest la, mm. that, that we have and... Uh, most expensive unit that is available right now is only, I would say, at 3.69, mm. uh, which is the three bed plus study uh, at the 18th floor. Even, as you can see, even some of the previously sold, right, uh, the penthouse, if I'm not wrong, uh, went for much, much more higher. Mm. And if you are buying at 3. Point, let me just see. If you are buying this currently at 3.6 as compared to whatever the first movers move, you have already made that difference also already mm. because they did launch at a higher Much price higher PSF before la. their revision of price. Yeah, so this is basically the past transactions that we want to showcase. Mm. So just do take note, these are basically the past, um, I mean, this was before the price revision. Mm. So on average, PSF is around the 3,400 uh, 3, mark. Mm, so right mm. now, this is basically a price range they are available. So one bidder, you can get it as, as low as $2 million. Right? And then for, as what I mentioned by Linden, uh, most expensive unit is a $3.693 million. In summary, last time, people are getting a two bidder with private leave at a price that you can enter for like a three bedroom now. Mm. So, so which is like a, like a, almost like a one meal kind of like adjustment. Like. So I think like if, from a pricing angle wise per square feet, I think like definitely at about like 3,000 attractive to come into a CCI area mm. Mm. Uh, for the lifestyle and that kind of location that you're very, very near uh, the GCB area mm. at the heart of, uh, at the a, at a center part of Singapore. So I think quantum play is interesting from there. Mm. Any concerns on whether like uh, 90, does 99 years plot perform well in a predominantly freehold area? So uh, the only thing that came to mind was uh, because I I have uh, assisted with two units purchased at uh, Copa also. Mm. And my client was asking me like, hey, uh, right now it's very scary because I'm buying 99 years into a freehold estate. Mm. So like what you Rong say, when you're buying into Cascadian, right, it is uh, trying to enter in at a more affordable quantum so that the bigger, the, so that the the share of the buyer, right, is increasing also. So we are allowing more people to enter. Uh, this can be evidently seen from Amaryllis, which is also in the same area of uh, Newton Novena, which was a 99-year leasehold uh, as compared to the surrounding. The mm. only difference is that uh, they stayed the same floor size also uh, as what was launched in the area. It's mm. just that they are 99 years leasehold, but right now you can see that the owners have made significant profits also. Because more and more people, last time, uh, uh, staying in no Newton Novena has been a 
sought after thing. Uh, now it has become quite a reality for quite a few people. So mm. staying in RCR mm. uh, on the edge, on the fringe of CCR. So right now with uh, with Cascadian, we are entering into that. It's more like a first mover's advantage, a first advantage la, that you're going to get that you are able to enter into something that seem like couldn't be afforded last mm. time. So I think like generally like if I were to summarize your thought process is that like uh, as long as there's a good enough disparity, especially mm. from a quantum pricing angle. Okay, because from a PSF pricing angle, the disparity is not say like huge. Like maybe mm. it's like $500 per square mm. feet. But I think because from the quantum perspective to like the sizing is a bit uh, smaller than what is the traditional around there, right? So the quantum itself can have like a $2 million to $3 million spread. Mm. So when there is this kind of quantum spread, you will find that like uh, there is still potential, upside potential. Mm. Just like what you can see in Emeralis mm. view mm. and mm. also Copa. But mm. I wouldn't say Copa it is, is just starting. So yeah, yeah. We Start, are, starting, but starting decent. Six, like, mm. uh, there, there are interests in that project and all that kind of thing because it has still generally been an affordable uh, mm. Project that people can consider if they want to consider even for schools, mm. SGI and all. Mm. Yeah, I, th- I think from a performance wise, right? Usually, I think like when it comes to uh, buildings like this, mm. I think whether in the future is there going to be good exit audience, right? Most importantly, is that uh, number one, uh, when you drive in, right? Does the facade feels good? Mm. Uh, like when you drive past, right? Does it is it well maintained? So these are always like key consideration factors, you know, mm. like that will attract somebody who want to stay in. Uh. Like, because right now, I think like the angling point, right, is that like, uh, the entire atmosphere in terms of concierge, uh, collection, it must look good. So as long as I think like the maintenance of it is good, uh, the exit audience would potentially be, be there as well, down the road. Mm. I think something that's interesting is because there is a new land plot, right? Mm, that was yes. being sold, right? Just so opposite Orchard Boulevard. Actually, is this before we go there, right? <coughs> before we go there, can yeah. I just say, right, if you take a look at it, uh, at the surrounding uh, just opposite Orchard Bel Air, 99 year leasehold, right? Uh, because this is based on a three months past transaction. Mm. Mm. 5.2 million. PSF is definitely lower, but because of the size that they are, that's why it's so much more expensive. And this is just right diagonally across um, opposite yes. um, Cascaden. Yeah, and this is a 40 year old or yeah, a 40 year old project already. Mm. So this shows that number one disparity is there because coupled with uh, the size and all that kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. So let's move on to our secret this weapon. Is, this is basically just to showcase the numbers, right? In terms mm. of the past transactions. La. Correct. In terms of past yeah. transaction versus the size of the unit or so. Yeah. Because 2,000, 3,000, 1,000, mm. 7,000, 4. Because Cascadia is basically right smack between Park Nova and Tree Orchard by the park. Yep. Right? So I think it's to just quickly showcase to you because like for example, the 1,004 square footage, those are uh, your two betas. Mm. Then you can see that they are averagely at about probably 4.85 million kind of pricing. Mm. Here it's at 2.5 million. Those are at like uh, 1,007, 2,000 plus square feet. Right? That can be your... Okay, 2,000 plus would be like a four beta already. But actually like 1,007 to 2,000, uh, those kind of sizing could be 6, 7 million upwards mm. for like a free beta. So that's where the pricing disparity that we want to come in. Like what... Uh, Linton mentioned just now. Mm. Mm. So, but just, just to take note, because Park Nova, Tree Orchard by the Park is also a freehold. Yes. So that's why we also threw in Orchard Bell Air where you see 3,200 3, square feet but 5.2 million. Of course, it's 1,006, 1,005 PSF but because of the size, the quantum play is not there mm. like what you mentioned. So just now we mentioned about the kind of like uh, maintenance of the place, right? Yes. So it's very important, right? So this so is where... <laughs> so that's where our secret, secret weapon is coming <laughs> in. So, uh, because I was also talking to the same client, he said, you have to go and take a look at the MCST. Okay, but you got concierge, you got every kind of thing, you got rotating art. But you're only paying $750 to $875 mm. per month. Mm. And this is per month. Eh. If I divide it by how much does it cost to park in Orchard, right? By season parking, right? My season parking in Orchard probably is like five six hundred dollars and I get to park at my home for $500 plus. Or seven hundred dollar plus, mm. and I also try to do a comparison of what are the surrounding in the area the projects they are MCST. We are talking about Novel eighteen, one of the newer ones. Mm. I think it's not too bad of a project also in Upmore area, very sought after address. Nine hundred seventy three to one thousand one hundred twenty two, but the most expensive two thousand eight hundred eighty nine per month. 
But of uh, Sculptura Artmore is also by SC Global. Right. Yes. So it's one of their projects. But I'm guessing, uh, of course, you get the total perks of the rotating art because they are part of SC Global. <coughs> uh, but you are paying a quarter, a quarter, seven, fourteen, twenty-one, twenty-eight, a quarter, a quarter of the price mm. in terms of the MCSD. Mm. So this makes it both very uh, aggressive and competitive both on an ownership kind of standpoint of view and also a rental. Mm. If you do buy it, you rent it out, your, your overhead continual cost is not that high also. Right. Mm. This one is actually yeah. more towards the land plot, right? Yeah, mm. which is what we're going to showcase. Which is, uh, Actually, let's go to this one. So you can see that uh, very close by, we have this uh, UAL government land sales site. Right, this was actually awarded uh, February this year, 2024. Very, very yes. fresh. News came out on March 9. Yeah, so I think it's a thing they are also plotting in a way la, that they also want to make sure that they, you know, they want to quickly move before this project basically launched. Mm. Yeah. Because the, the acquisition price for a core central region property at 1,006 per square feet per plot ratio, 1,006. Mm. And uh, if we were to just do the calculations, based on like the break even price of about $2,600 after factoring marketing costs, building mm. costs and all that, mm. uh, they could be potentially launching at $3,000 so averagely and upwards. La. So I think like this is also a very good plot actually. Yeah, so Yurong, can I ask you like, like yeah. will developers ever, with your experience in the launch market, will developers ever sell lower than what the surrounding is? For example, if you were URL, would you be not greedy and probably sell at 2.9. Why sell at 2.9? And, and just thinking of it uh, that number one, you I mean, are a mix D. La. You, are, you, are, <laughs> you are a mix D because below you is a... Uh, first story commercial. First story commercial. Would you count this as an integrated because right... You are right beside the orchard. You are right like beside orchard. Okay. So would it sell at 2.9? No, I don't uh, so. Actually, like, I would say that from a business standpoint, number one, uh, when the land price is low, mm. it just means that uh, based on the market sentiments at the point of time when I'm launching my, my competition and all that, if I can extract a little bit better margin, mm. then like, the question is like, why not? Mm. Right? I think like, importantly is uh, to launch at a price that overall is palatable. But I think what is more important will be the overall design concept uh, in terms of how efficient the floor plans are going to be, mm. you know, like the landscaping and all that will determine, you know, like how are they uh, categorizing their product category and then so that will directly translate into how much the eventual launch price is, mm. will, will, is going to be. Yep. But I think like uh, at about like that 3,000 odd range should be launching higher. I think like that makes it very attractive from a per square feet angle. Mm. So I think the key consideration will be eventually like how if you know four pen is right, then you will determine what's the quantum price and what is the angling of this de mm. development. Mm. So why why we we showed this slide is especially because, uh, like what we always say, we want to see what are the surrounding transactions in our area, mm. and if we have a upcoming so called more or less integrated land that's probably gonna be selling maybe about two nine three thousand most likely is gonna be more la, uh, that helps supports the price in the area bringing up the valuation of if you enter at about 2.9 at Cascadian Reserve, would it be a very good buy? Uh, I think ultimately, it has to lead towards what your lifestyle is. Does mm -hmm. it suit your lifestyle? But is it a value buy if you had that kind of lifestyle? I would say not too bad of an option. Mm. I think yeah. averagely, they would be able to do 3.3. Three, three mm. Right. I think definitely this is food for thought. La. Food for thought. Because we do not know the, the units mixed. Uh, we do not know the unit size yet, you know, and in terms of the eventual quantum la, end of mm. the day. Do we want to show the last one, which is this no, one? No need. No, no need, right? Yeah, so, <coughs> all right. I think it's quite Closing a couple thoughts. of... Yeah, the, <laughs> the, the, the thing is about this cascaded is that, of course, you know, banging on this news where um, the developer announced a drop in pricing and then immediately you have uh, quite a couple of units that's being sold. But at a point in time right now, there's still quite a couple of units that's still available, which we have shared, you know, what's the, the perks of uh, moving into this area where probably from a pricing perspective, quantum perspective, PSF perspective, you have to compare across the different other regions, whether does it make sense. I think there is still uh, quite some good value reasons for you to really consider this project if you want to go into the lifestyle of Orchard. Mm. Mm. So, so there are people who, number one, you want something that is brand new. They have to wait. Ready to move in? Yeah, you want yeah. something that is uh, in the Orchard Belt area. Mm. And uh, of course, you know, like, 
one of the lowest maintenance fee that you can find for a new <laughs> building. Disclaimer at the point of recording. La. <laughs> I think even even for old buildings, right? Uh, maybe very comparable. Like probably Orchard three bedrooms is around 600, 650 probably. per month. Mm. And, but this is in the Patterson side. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So I think this will be the, the anchoring point. I think like uh, it offers the lifestyle and the convenience uh, predominantly as I think like from where you want uh, from like a lifestyle perspective, I think this will be a good consideration. Mm. Mm. For me, it's uh, definitely agreeing with what you all say. I'm always the last one. Then in the end, I don't have much thoughts to share. But, <laughs> but uh, I have to say that for me, so entering... Mr. Young, you want to buy? Uh? Uh, I don't have 3 million cash on me now. <laughs> la. And you I loan, ultimately... Ma? Ultimately, I'm subjected to five years MOP with my HDB. But I would say that uh, the main takeaway is that uh, for Orchard, finally, we are hearing this thing called quantum affordability. Mm. For it, It's starting to become allowable for maybe a bigger market to enter. Mm. It's no more only for... Not so niche anymore. Yes, la. it's no more only for expats and all that kind of thing or right. high earners. Mm. Yeah. Alright, so with that, we come to the end of the review for Cascaden Reserve. We hope we um, get some learnings from this uh, review session. Uh, and if you want to find out more about this particular project or any of the other new launches um, that has been launched in the in this year, last year, or upcoming new launches, you know, you can always reach out to our new launch consultants. Their links are just right below. Uh, and with that, you know, stay tuned to our next um, episode of our new launch review in the PLB Insights channel. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.